Good evening to you. Oh my god! <laughs> It's Jessica and welcome to a bloody party. So this is a new visual novel by my great friend Michaela Laws if you haven't heard and she was kind enough to send me a game key to play the game and I'm very excited because this game is about vampires. I think you guys know that I love vampires so you know I'm all about this game. Um, but before we begin, if you guys would like to grab the game yourself, I have a link in the description where you can get it. Also, check out Michaela and her work as well. Follow her on Twitch, she does live streams too, so if you want to like catch up and talk with her or ask questions, that would be a great way to do that. So I'm just going to read the description of this game so you guys can get a feel of what is going to happen. When your best friend becomes obsessed with vampires and bravely, foolishly, decides to crash a party to prove his crazy theory, you end up volunteering to go to his place to stop him. After all, I know of free food and dancing why not it's not like vampires actually exist right uh, so this game is full of uh, voice acting in it also there are mini games there apparently are seven bad endings and only one good ending so this is gonna be very interesting for me because I'm not very really good at getting the good ending first so we'll see if I can get it Michaela also added that you can make your own character masculine or feminine like depending on like what kind of pronouns you would like to use for your character which is so cool um, there's also an Easter egg for you seduce me fans so if you stick around you might see it Anyway, let's get started. Welcome to A Bloody Party, a short visual novel created in, when created in Renpai by Michaela Laws. It is suggested that you play this game with both keyboard and mouse. All quick time events in the story require a mouse to interact with the screen. Oh, okay. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoy the story. I definitely will. <laughs> Michaela has been working on this for a very, very long time. I, I remember her, um, I, I'm pretty sure she did a 48 hour live stream of her writing the script. So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. Why? Why did I agree to it? What on earth possessed me to agree to such a potentially dangerous and stupid promise? Was I high? Was I too tired or stressed to care? Probably. Either way, I'm going to do it. I had to. I didn't have a choice. I was going to a vampire ball. Why are you doing this again? Because I've lost control of my life. The real answer would be nice, please. Not a sarcastic one. I grumbled, adjusting my outfit in the mirror. I strained in my tie and brushed off my dress pants. With a sigh, I, sm I smoothed out my waistline on my dress. That's so cool! So you can be like a lady wearing a suit or a dude wearing a dress or whichever! I like this! Personally, I would probably wear a dress because I like wearing dresses anyway, so like, you know. <laughs> I don't know, because it was a stupid promise that would prove that he is wrong. You saw his face, remember? I mean, come on, a vampire ball? Give me a break. Vampires weren't real. I was probably dressing up for nothing and it was going to be punked with some cameras. My mind couldn't stop itself from remembering the promise I made in a hilarious nostalgia. Come on, vampires are 100% real. I see the pink lady cafe in the background. You're sounding like one of those weird conspiracy theorists. What proof do you have? I have tons of proof. Bull. Oh yeah? Oh. The first act of my stupid decision was the card Paul Well produced it from his pocket. It was strangely ornate, and something about it seemed fantastical despite being a piece of paper. What does it say? Dearest Noble Montez, you have been invited to a thrilling masquerade. I should do a British accent or something, I don't know why. Every time I associate it with something very fancy, I just throw in the British accent. <laughs> Dear Noble Montez, you have been invited to a thrilling masquerade ball this Hall Hallow's Eve. Hosted by ever respected Monse Estate. Please come in your best attire and a mask for your desire. Drinks and hors d'oeuvres to be provided by the family. Synthetic pills upon. What the fuck? Excuse me? <laughs> Synthetic pills upon request. All guests must present their invitation upon arriving. Please time your arrival for 7 p.m. after the sun falls. WM. Hmm. Even the pattern of the card was deeply intricate. I couldn't help but stare. What the heck is that? You know that strange cafe on McCammon Street? The Raven's Kiss? I went there to stake out the place. And you question why girls find you creepy. <laughs> Not the point. Anyway, while I was there, I found this left in one of the booths. Who even thinks about taking stuff from an empty booth? Would you both just shut up and read the card? With a reluctant grumble, I swipe the card from the table and read its contents aloud. 
Okay, I, I, already, I already read it See, out. See, the Monse estate is this weird family that runs a blood drive clinic and... Shut up, for God's sake. Wait until the reading is over before opening your damn mouth. As I was saying, <laughs> Howell gestured frantically for me to keep reading, making me roll my eyes before continuing on. Um, synthetic pills upon requests? Synthetic pills? Of what? Powell was bouncing in his seat, obviously desperate to say something despite the demand placed upon him by Candy. I continued, confused, but still unconvinced. Alright. At my final word, Powell let out a breath of air and slammed his hands on the table. I know what synthetic pills are! They're fake blood capsules! Okay? Wait, fake blood capsules? Why would a party serve those? For vampires! <sighs> Candy let an exasperated groan. For role players, idiot. You could you be not LARPers heard too. Of vampire role play? <laughs> Creepy groups of people get together and pretend to be vampires with parties and crap. This is probably one of those fake fetish parties and you picked up an invitation for it. Okay, I'm gonna say this right now. I don't judge you. If this is your fetish, you wanna dress up as a vampire and eat, eat fake blood with your partner or your friends as a fetish? Whatever, dude. That's fine as long as you're not being weird. But in this case, it's most likely not a fetish thing. <laughs> this isn't a fake roleplay party. It's real and there are vampires there. That's it. I'm done listening to this crappy conspiracy theory. I'm going home. But I wanted to believe Powell, but I knew better. Vampires were in no way, shape, or form real. Still, there was a desperate look in his eyes as he, as if he truly believed exactly what he was theorizing. He was a logical guy, and yet here he was, talking about vampires. How can you be so sure this is real? Because I know, alright? I just know it. I've been researching and writing about vampires all of my life. Mm -hmm. This is too perfectly aligned to my theories. What do you even plan to do with this? I... I want to go and get solid proof. I want to show everyone that vampires are indeed real and not just some goth king people claim it is. <laughs> Despite his sincerity, a million red flags went up in my head. What if it is fake? He'd be forced out and put out on display as a public nuisance. What if it was a secret party of a cult or something? Who could wind up getting involved in something illegal or wind up hurt? That is also a possibility. You don't know. Maybe it's a cult. On the extreme end of it, what if this crazy theory was true? He'd be a human in a, a ball full of blood-sucking monsters. I doubt he would survive. I couldn't let him go. No, you can't do this. Why not? I didn't even stop myself from spurting out what I said next. Because I'll go for you. Why? Why on earth did I say that? You'll really go for me? Yeah, I will. That way you can't accidentally cause a scene. If you're right, I'll bring you back proof. The look on his face was almost heart-wrenching. He was very grateful, and I was internally screaming for in confusion at my own actions and my words. Yeah, that is kind of random. You're just like, yeah, you know, that's fine, dude. I'll just go there. If there's vampires, I might die. It's okay, though. <laughs> Powell spent an obnoxious amount of money on an outfit for me that was perfect for the ball. If there was any doubt of him actually believing in, believing in this case, the price tag was proof of his obsession. I had to admit, I looked pretty awesome in it, and if it were a fake party, then I got to keep the outfit for a real occasion later. That was a win, I guess. Candy couldn't help but roll her eyes at my participation in this. If there are any hot girls there, make sure to take a picture of them, okay? <laughs> Candy's me. <laughs> Why do you care if there are hot girls at a vampire party? Um, hello? Single? <laughs> right, will do. And with that, I was out of the door and on my way to a party I was technically in invited to. Uh, Powell, had e Powell had even arranged for a limo to drive me there. More money than ignorantly spent. At least I got to arrive in style. Damn, Powell must be rich! What the hell? <laughs> The ride there caused me to think hard on my situation. Was it worth it? Probably not. But I made a promise to go for Powell, and I wasn't going back on my word now. Not after the money Powell had spent it on fitting me in. I reaffirmed my belief. Vampires weren't real. I was just going to a party, drink a, drink a little, dance a little, and leave. I wouldn't have to prove anything. I believe every word I spoke to myself, trying to quell any doubt and that lingered. The sight of the misty forest around the limo solidified my calm. Then again, a party in the middle of a thick forest? I shook my head profusely and forced an irritated growl along with my doubts. If this is a roleplay ball, they probably pulled out all the stops. Right, this is a fake vampire party and nothing was wrong. Even when I arrived, I still held true to my thoughts. 
I was stunned at the front of the party house. It was a gorgeously aged mansion. Guests dressed to the nines under dark umbrellas were climbing the front of the steps and entering the building. It didn't help that the mansion was located in the middle of a thick forest. The night sky and trees around it gave almost an enchanting glow. Even the, tr even the rain that fell and the mist that slowly rolled in put my mind in a fantastical haze. It is a beautiful mansion! I mean, take a look at it! It's nice! It was like I had jumped back in time. Was this really a role play party? It was really atmospheric. Stretching my umbrella out of the limo and over my head first, I exited my carriage and all sorts and began my ascension to the stairs. Hearing my limo leave behind me last, hearing the limo, hearing my limo leave behind me at last. To my surprise, some of the guests were climbing alongside me, stopped and stared at me, watching me intensely. Was something wrong? Maybe they knew I was new. Uh, maybe they knew you were human. <laughs> I shook my head and continued on, reaching to the door. I almost dropped my jaw at the sight of the doorman, a big hulking muscle man in a suit that somehow fit him perfectly. As I settled onto my feet in front of him, the man raised an eyebrow at me. Was it really that obvious that I was not actually an invited guest? Invitation, please. I suddenly took out the card Pawwell gave me and lifted it up to him. He took it and peered over the contents, affirming that it was a real invitation. After a moment, he looked back at me with a confused face, but nodded slowly and moved aside. Have a good evening. Thank you? I tried to be polite back before walking inside. I didn't want him to look uh, I didn't want him to look at me for too long and change his mind about me. This is awkward. Entering the building left me almost breathless. The grand lobby was practically sparkling with people, all perfectly elegant and regal spread around. All of the outfits looked expensive too. I guess it was good choice for Powell to spend as much money as he did? A person dressed in a servant tuxedo quickly rushed over and took my umbrella, laying it on the door with a handful of others. At least I didn't have to carry it around. Standing by the entrance, I wasn't sure where to begin my investigation. I had to enter... I had entered and now I was at a loss. There were a faint sound of music echoing in the halls, almost lost underneath the sound of guests chattering onto one another. It was haunting to say the least. Was there a dance hall? Walking in further, I was greeted by more stairs, but lucky enough to not become a spotlight person of interest. Maybe my mess had some effect on concealing who I was? It wasn't perfect, but it kept a good majority of my attention short-lived. Ooh. I, I like the atmosphere. It's very nice. I like this kind of shit, like this vi Victorian kind of style, gothic kind of stuff. Kind of like, um, yeah, vampires. <laughs> I made my way slowly into the dance hall where I was stunned by the music and the air and dancing and the dancing that was occurring on the dance floor. I was really back in time. The couples of the floor were waltzing as if it was second nature to them. No step was out of rhythm. No expression stood out. How was this possible? Did the guests know the dance ahead of time? That had to have been the case. I slowly walked along the edge of the dance floor, still entranced by the sight of the waltzing couples. It was like being thrown into a fairy tale scene. That was until someone cleared their throat beside me, breaking me out of my immersion. Huh? I turned and became speechless. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> vampire! First vampire! Are you the only vampire? I don't know. <laughs> Before me was a handsome man with golden blonde hair and deep pale blue eyes. He simply stared at me and gave me a charming smile that I swore pulled at some heartstrings in my chest. Good evening to you. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, good evening to you too. That was close. Excellent. Are you enjoying yourself? Actually, I just arrived, so I can't really say. Is that so? Well, I hope that you'll enjoy my party. Wait, his party? Ah, so you're... William Monsey, heir to the Monsey family line. He extended a hand to me, one that I was slightly excited yet fearful to take. In a show of some confidence, I managed to lay my hand on his. I could only watch wide-eyed as he lifted my hand to his lips and kissed over my knuckles. Uh... And your name is? Crap, I had to think. I I'm Jessica from... The... Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh... Martina's family? I don't know. Wait. The name said... And, and, and the invite said... Truly. Are humans truly that forgetful of their own facade? Hey, I fucked up already! Oh, shit. I... Whoa! William suddenly grabbed onto my throat and began to squeeze it hard, lifting me up. Ah! I began to thrash and kick in desperation. Both her freedom and the air began to deny me. Humans should learn how to lie <laughs> before stepping into a vampire's home mindlessly. Holy crap! Ah! What do you plan to do with it? Drain it, of course. But I can't let it thrash around while I bring it to the kitchens. What? I got one bad 
landing already. What is in the name? <laughs> okay, let me try that again. Okay, Montez. Uh, William's eyes widened a bit before he slowly lowered my hand and stood up straight with a tiny smirk. Did he know I was lying? Really? I had to be confident in my fabrication. I straightened up a bit and nodded in return to his question. Yes, I mean, the invitation was addressed to the Montez family, yes? Unless there has been an error? William kept his gaze on me in obvious thought before chuckling and nodding. You are correct. <laughs> I apologize. I have to be careful I with this dude. my memory is not as healthy as I thought. At least there wasn't a first name on the invitation. As the dance song changed, William held out his arm to me. Well then, allow me to make up for my mistake with the dance. Yeah, as long as you don't choke hold me and break my neck, that's cool, dude. <laughs> there was no way I could dance with this group of people. It all seemed planned and choreographed ahead of time. How was I going to keep up? I began to shake my head and step back. No, 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 I couldn't possibly- Please, I insist. Suddenly, I felt the stare of multiple guests on me, doing a quick glance around, uh, around. I noticed a bunch of people looking in my direction, waiting to see what I would do. Was I expected to comply? A wave of nerves crashed down on each vertebrae of my spine, causing me to gulp silently. I needed to agree. I needed to dance. How the hell was I going to do this? I slowly wrapped my arm around his and nodded, accepting my fate and praying to every deity that I knew to guide my feet. Alright, that sounds fun. William gave me a deep smile before leaning into me on the dance floor. I tightened my grip on his arm and I felt a number of gazes turn to me in curiosity. That's it. I stood out. There was no confusion or denial about it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> he is- he is cute! I like his design. I- I will say that. He's got the- the bow tie going on. Very good look for a vampire. Cause usually vampires, at least from media that I've seen, they always have like very dark hair. If they have makeup on, it's like dark makeup or dark eyes, very, very pale skin, paler than this dude. So it's very interesting that it's a different um, look. As William stopped, I squared up him and held up my arms, hoping to be led properly. Maybe I'll be able to wing my way through it. Are you alright? You seem a little tense. Uh, I'm fine, let's just dance. I was just admiring your eyes. I was admiring your eyes, they're so beautiful. William seemed to stop and stare at me in surprise, however, I couldn't lie. He was pretty handsome. After a small breath, William stepped up to me and held me close, locking uh, locking eyes with me. Oh, dear. Flatter me. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> then the music began to pick up, and the dance began. Click the screen notes to light up with the blanks. What? The black smoke? What? Okay, um, I guess. Did I do it right? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Just as long as it's in the black smoke, that's when I click it. It's like DDR. <laughs> Just as long as I don't allow it to go over. <laughs> I don't want her to break his neck or break her neck again. That was like scary. Cause that was like out of nowhere too. All right, all right, all right. I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Oh dear God. Okay. <laughs> The music is really lovely. I wonder who the composer is for this game. You have very lovely music! <laughs> ah! Okay, okay. I almost got this. I almost got this. Come on. Come on. Is it over? Did I do it? <sighs> I'm gonna save that just in case he breaks her neck again. The dance ended and I was surprised that I was able to keep up. How was that possible? I guess I was more attentive to my surroundings than I thought. Thank God for my eyes and reflexes. William stepped away from me and bowed, ushering me to do the same in return. Well done. I enjoyed myself. Thank you. I did as well. I nodded to him before he led me off the dance floor back onto the carpet. I adjusted my mask and looked around, now ready to move on. Well, I guess I'll... Whoa, why did his eyes turn... Why did they turn green? For a moment, my throat seized up and my voice refused to finish my sentence. What? Are you alright? I looked up to see William staring down at me. However, something was different about him. Weren't his eyes blue? Why were they green? Click the yellow spots to break through the charm. Oh, is he hypnotizing me? Excuse me! Okay. Listen to me. What? No! No! Like my mind was... What? 
Perfect. What happened? Did I do it wrong again? What do you plan to do with it? Damn it! It wandered into my home, so I should take care of it. Take care of it? Yes. But first, a taste. Jesus Christ! Oh, okay, cool. That's a like, nice sound taking my blood. Thank you, William. Ah. What the council doesn't know won't hurt them. I will drain you dry for everyone to see. Bad ending. Feast your eyes upon me. Second one. <laughs> no, no, no. Did I do it? Whatever I had hold of my mind eventually gave up and vanished, like a thought that seemed fleeting. My throat opened up once more and I was able to speak. Uh, what? William, however, continued to stare at me in confusion and, sur and concern. As I blinked, Anna's frame shifted, his eyes returned to their soft blue tint. Why were they green in the first place? Is everything alright? Uh, yeah. Question William Lee- I'll let me question him! William, why were your eyes suddenly green? William's eyes widened suddenly and his eyebrows forward in further confusion. I'm sorry? I saw your eyes turn green. Was he lying to me or were my eyes playing tricks on me and he was hiding something? Was he? Using a spell of some sort on me? Nevertheless, William shook his head and gently took my hold of my hand, leaning towards me. For a moment, my heart jumped into my throat at how close he became. Are my eyes still green? No, but I know what I saw. Some part of me was screaming to stop speaking. For some reason, I couldn't feel like I was dancing on a knife's edge, and continuing this would only bring danger. I began to bite my tongue, but William straightened up his posture and let out a small sigh. It must have been the lights playing with your vision. Yes, of course, it's always the lights. Blue eyes turning green, but it always came down to the lights. Yeah, I'm sure, William. William looked up, causing me to do the same. On the ceilings were gorgeous chandeliers, all lit with soft flames. That's right, these were all lit chandeliers, yellow, yellow plus blue. Oh, I'm sorry for being mistaken. Was I trying to cover myself for being too suspicious, or did I truly believe the colors of the light made William's eyes green? Either way, William's lips softened to a smile. Phew. William took a step back, and I bowed to at the hip to me. Hmm? Well, I hope you enjoy the ball. Yeah. Please feel free to eat and drink to your heart's content. I smiled back and bowed in return. Thank you, William, and thank you for the dance. With a nod and a chuckle, William turned and disappeared into the crowd, leaving me alone at last. I couldn't help but mentally sigh. The host of a party I was infiltrating made me dance with him, and now I was on my own again. At least I was free to eat the food now. I slowly made my way through the crowds, through the growing smells of fresh food. I could recognize fruits and meats and all kinds, even chocolates. As I reached for the large food table at the side of the room, I couldn't- I could only gasp at this- I could only gasp and salivate at the sight. The table was full of different foods, ranging from ripened fruit to delicious smoked meats and cheeses. There was even a large chocolate of vanilla fondue fountain, perfectly enticing anyone to stick their hand in for fun. I didn't know where to start. There were so many options. As I began to reach for something, however, a voice trickled near my ear. To believe that William danced with that thing. <laughs> so they are all vampires, oh god. Be quiet. Don't let him hear you say that lest you lose your privileges with the Monse family. She is right, though. Why is that thing here anyway? They knew. They knew I didn't belong despite me wearing a mask. But how do they know? I was in perfect disguise. Was this party truly that private where anyone, where everyone knew each other? Yes, uh, yet I was let in. I gritted my teeth, unappreciative of being called a thing, and continued to grab food from the table. One bite was all that took from my mouth to start watering and despite need for more. How could food be this delicious? Another bite, a moan tried to escape my lips, but I successfully held it back. I began to regret not bringing a small clutch to take some food back with me. I continued to slowly grab at food I wanted and consume it, savoring each flavor I put in my mouth. This was truly heaven. Would you care for a drink? I stopped at the voice directed at me, turning to the waiter, holding up a tray of small wine glasses. The cups themselves were oriented and beautiful at beautiful to look at. What was inside of them, however, made my breath halt in my throat. Each one held a dark red liquid of some kind, thick in texture just from how they settled in the cups. Um, I'm assuming they're blood! <laughs> that wasn't wine. Um, what drinks do you have? We have a typical fare. Simply take and enjoy if you desire as such. Unless you have a special request. Phew, I didn't have to play with thick liquid I wasn't sure of. Do you have water? Certainly. Will you be requiring a capsule? 
My mind instantly went to Powell, remembering how he claimed that the capsules were full of fake blood. As Candy's reminder of vampires roleplay came to mind, I decided to take a breath. I decided to take a breath and make a decision. Yes, thank you. I don't want to look like a weirdo because, like, honestly, I feel like if we don't take the capsule and put it in the water, we're just drinking water. Everyone's gonna be like, "What the hell's wrong with that person?" You know what I mean? As I agreed, I couldn't feel sudden waves of gazes latched onto my form. What did I just agree to? The waiter stared for a moment before nodding and walking away, most likely going to obtain my request. Unless it's not fake blood and it's something else. As I waited, I stood by the table knowing that the waiter wouldn't or probably couldn't track me if I moved away through the crowds. It was unnerving to be alone at the party. Should I have brought Candy with me? Paolo was not going to sit still, so Candy was my only other friend who would have been comforted to stand beside. I also couldn't help but realize there was a clear circle of space around me made by the other guests, as if they did not want or dare to be within three foot radius around me. What? Did I smell or something? I took a quick moment to lean my head towards my shoulder and stiff my armpit. I didn't smell bad. Then why was I being isolated? Not even a minute went by before I, I was approached by the waiter again with a glass of water. In the waiter's other hand was a teacup saucer with a capsule. I could see a thinner red liquid soft, uh, sloshing in the container, eagerly waiting for it to go down my throat. What was it exactly? Was it red water? Was it syrup? Juice? The water. Thank you. I collected the pill from the saucer and took the glass from the server, and I nodded in appreciation. He only smiled back before vanishing into the crowd. I sighed. I was alone. I had eaten. I had my drink. Was it time- Was it time to leave? Maybe. After all, I had the fake blood capsule that was my ticket to provide whether or not Powell was telling the truth. Looking around to avoid suspicion, I pocketed the capsule. I was lucky that my dress- I was lucky that the dress Powell brought had pockets. Hey, that's it. That's good. <laughs> I took a sip of water, calming myself and planning to, what to do next. I decided to text Powell. Thanks. I placed the water. I placed the glass of water onto the table nearby for safety. I rummaged through my pockets, I brought up my phone. My fingers slid over my screen, unlocking it easily, and I guided myself to my messenger app. Just as I was about to type what I needed to say, Mr. Monzi. Huh? Oh, here he is again! The sudden exclamation caused me to turn my head. Right behind me stood William Monse, causing me to jump a little at the sudden fright. Ah! And thus, my phone dropped into my hands and slid under someone's foot. Uh, uh... Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. There goes my phone and my way to escape the place! <laughs> the look of anger on William's face could kill. William turned and glared at the woman who had landed her heel on my phone, taking my own rage from my, the situation and using it against her. So not only do you lack talent in basic dancing, but you are also clumsy enough to step on a phone and break someone's property. M Mr. Monzi, I... Get out. Whoa, just from his words, my breath caught in my throat. The woman he had commanded to leave shook her in her spot, unconsciously digging her heel into my phone further. Hey! I stepped forward, now enraged that she was still standing on my phone, before the group of before the group the woman was in dragged her off and away from me and William. William slowly let out a burning sigh before turning to me with a concerned frown. Yeah, my phone isn't. Um, yes, thank you. While my phone was a tragedy, I was happy to know that William cared for my well-being. William nodded with a relieved smile. That is good to hear. I'm glad that thing did not distress you further. Thing? Is she a human too? William stepped over and picked up my phone, observing the damage done to it. A part of my soul died looking at it. I had no means to contact Powell, but I also thought of the fi uh, financial turmoil buying a new phone would cause. Now what am I gonna do? Would you be alright using my phone instead for tonight? I assume you either wanted to call for your driver or chat with someone. My eyes, lit, my eyes lit up at his offer. He was really going to let me use his phone? Really? You wouldn't mind? William simply nodded before bringing out his phone from his pocket. To my surprise, instead of seeing a brand I recognized the, on the case, there was a blood red rose inscribed on the, on the back. Do you know your driver's number or who you wanted to speak to? I grimaced. My memory wasn't that great, but I at least remember Powell's number. Yes, I know the number I need to contact. William passed his phone over to me before wiggling my broken phone in his uh, other hand. Allow me to dispose of this one. Later tonight, I can arrange the means to compensate you for the damages done to it and for a replacement. That's a little bit weird in my opinion. I get you, you want to like buy me a new phone, but why do you need to take my old one, huh? 
I felt like swooning. This guy was truly being a big help and such a gentleman. Thank you, William. I'd appreciate that. Without a reply in return, William turned and walked away back into the crowd. I looked down at William's phone, seeing it already unlocked for me. To my surprise, I saw a large blooming red rose set up as his background. Did he have a liking for red roses? I shook my head and opened up the messenger app, seeing it completely void of any messages. Did he erase messages as they came? William was becoming more and more of an enigma than I thought. Of an enigma than I thought. An interesting enigma, but a mysterious one nonetheless. I opened up the new messenger and typed in Powell's number before writing out my message. Powell, this is just gone Williams Monse's uh, phone. The guy whose family you mentioned? I got the fa fake blood pa capsule. Can you pick me up? No, don't say it because he'll know! I gotta say, I feel like something bad is gonna happen again. I checked my messages twice before sending it and deleting it after. There was no need to clutter Williams' phones with my messages thread if he took care in keeping his message inbox empty. Literally seconds after I sent the message, Williams' phone went off, signaling Powell's reply. I opened the message to take a look at Powell's message, wondering how the hell he was able to reply back so fast. Got it. On my way. Be there in 30. That was fast. I deleted the message and pocketed William's phone. Sighing to myself, I had to wait 30 minutes? Well, I guess I could eat more. I turned to the table only to be surprised to find that my glass of water was gone. Are you serious? First my phone, now my water? I grumbled, knowing that the only person I knew in this building was William, but he had vanished into the crowd. The waiter was gone and out of sight. And I was alone. For some reason, the feeling of being alone made something in my core shudder. I didn't know anyone, truly, and I just stood there. I couldn't have just left and walked home, maybe take a taxi or a bus, but Paula was on his way. Biting my lip, I knew that I wasn't going to let myself feel like this for long. I needed to find William. I slowly made my way through the crowd, keeping an eye for him. Maybe he was close, in case he wanted this phone back? My suspicions were true. I pinned my sights on William, speaking to a group of people. The conversation seemed casual from the look on his face. I made my way over and caught his attention through the crowd. Despite being in mid-conversation, he halted speaking to the address me and caused the group he was talking to to be silent. Ah, uh, did you contact who you needed to? Yes, thank you. Here's your phone back. With a smile, William took back his phone and pocketed so, it. So, when do you plan to leave? My driver will be here in 30 minutes. William frowned as I mentioned my time of a departure. A shame that you can't stay here longer. Oh uh, well. Turning away from his conversation partner as he held out his arm to me. Walk with me for a bit. Sure, where are you taking me? <laughs> I didn't have anything better to do. I gently wrapped my arm around his and followed his lead away from the group he had been speaking to. Why did he not acknowledge them? They seemed content, however, to remain in their place unaffected. William led me around the lobby and dance hall in a casual manner, allowing me to see everything about the rooms and atmosphere. So, other than the phone accident, did you enjoy your time here? Yes! <laughs> I couldn't lie, I loved the food and dancing was exciting when the atmosphere of the party was all in all enchanting. I smiled and gently squeezed William's arm. Thank you for a wonderful time, William. William's lips curled into a smile on its own pride, nodding at my statement. The pleasure was mine. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> At least William was able to pick up some pieces of tonight and not make it unbearable. William stopped in the corner of the dance hall, turning fully to me and taking my hand. Well, at least allow me one chance to toast with you, for a meeting unexpected by both of us. He was charming, and his offer w was one I couldn't refuse. Sure, one toast. William turned his head and snapped his fingers, the sound echoing lately in the room. With moments, a waiter arrived with a tray of glasses, one that I recognized. I couldn't help but gulp silently. Did he really want me to toast with a glass of that? William took up two glasses from the tray and offered me one, letting me know that I was going to have to toast with it. Despite every fiber of my being waving red flags in my brain, I reached out and took the glass out of respect. I was not going to object to his request. I'm scared! What is he gonna do? <laughs> As his hand became free, he lifted his glass towards me with the other hand. To our meeting. To our meeting. Our glasses clinked and the toast was made. Now to drink. William gently lifted his glass to his lips and sipped from it, but kept his eyes on me. At that moment, I could feel every eye of everyone in that room piercing into me. Why was I on display again? My fear began to strike hard into my soul with doubt and a sudden theory. What if Pablo is right? What if everyone here was a vampire and I was about to drink blood? These vampires had to watch me in the entire night, and now I was about to make a decision that all of them se seemed interested in. The more sane part of my brain, however, began to fight back. This was just a toast to this was just a toast with the host of a party. 
They were intrigued by someone who they obviously knew was new. And the drink was nothing more than fake blood. Maybe even thick juice or wine. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> I began to mentally battle myself. Should I trust my instincts? Should I listen to reason? Should I believe in doubt? Should I shake it off? Shake it off. <laughs> I had seconds to decide. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Let me say first, because I want to actually see what happens. What if I just don't drink it? I want to know what happens first. Don't drink it. I couldn't do it. I didn't care what was in the glass. I was too afraid. Would it be okay if I asked for water instead? William stared at me, glass still in hand. For a moment, the air around me grew still. You could drop a pin and hear it collide with the marble floor. Eee! Before I could register what happened, William had smashed his glass cup across my cheek, letting the shirt sh clatter around me. Some even bedded themselves into my face. Damn, this guy's so violent! I fell onto the floor, shaken from the hit and traumatized by the pain. Blood from the cup was splattered across my face, blinding me. Insolent human, thinking you can make <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. Position. I could feel myself become crowded and leered at the like a wounded animal. I tried to wipe my eyes, but the sting of blood kept them closed in pain. Look at you, a defenseless little mouse, surrounded by predators. Help me! I chuckled, and a knee made contact with my hair, pressing it into a painful malice. Uh, someone help me! A hand on my head, forcing my face up. Enough of your cries. One moment I was able to scream. And the next, a long broken stem of wine glass shoved into my neck and throat. Jesus Christ! My scream became burbled, uh, burbled and bubbled, and my lungs quickly began to fill with blood. My body began to spasm as William began to laugh above me. I thrashed my arms and legs, trying to hit him to get up. Something. But soon, I fell into darkness. Broken glass! So he shoved a freaking glass into my face and I died. And the, the stem of the wine glass into my neck! Okay, drink it. I couldn't let my fear get to me. I had to drink. In an overwhelming burst of confidence, I leaned my head back and chugged the drink down. Please don't let it be what I think it is! Click your glass to drink? Okay. There we go, there we go, there we go. Powell was right. Powell was absolutely right. What I guzzled down my throat was blood. The metallic sting, the coppery scent, the iron aftertaste. I, without a doubt, forced myself to swallow blood from wine glass and a toast with a vampire. Stay calm, stay calm, girl. I had to stay calm. I had to remain calm if I didn't want to be found out. This was crazy. What was happening? What was real? What was reality? I could only stand there, taking in the fact that I had tasted blood in a room full of vampires. No normal human would drink blood. Then what did, then what did that make me? A survivor? A spy? Someone willing to take the hit for someone because they didn't believe in their crazy conspiracy theory? I was wrong. I was very wrong. Still, I stood, calm as a stone. I would not let them win. William stared at me in a form of surprise. Did he expect me to fail his test? As it was su as it was such? Interesting. Yes, interesting. What, was that not a satisfactory toast? Silence reigned over us. There was even a hush in the crowd at the at what had occurred between us. I was being watched the entire night and they expected me to fail they expected me to fall one way or another. I would not have been surprised if they were taking bets. William stood still for a moment before giving me a charming smirk. Did you enjoy it? Yes! <laughs> a lie escaped me. It was fine. Not the best I've had. William's eyebrow lifted in amusement curiosity. Truly. I grinned softly, trying to lighten the tension in the air. I only joke. It was a toast I shall remember forever. William nodded slowly, lowering his glass to a nearby table. Indeed. I needed to get out. I needed to find a way to escape this place with my life intact. I prepared to excuse myself from William, but he surprised me by taking my hand. That reminds me. We still have to settle your phone damages. Great, we can't leave! Oh no, shit, 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 shit! Oh, right. I suddenly gulped and I stared into William's eyes. Now that I knew what he was, I could almost pinpoint the devilish look behind his innocent gaze. I was a mouse, he was a cat, and I had entered the den if I knew better. One last test, one last performance, and I was free to live. And I was free to leave. Pavel was on his way. I had less than 15 minutes to wait. Might as well power through it. I took the initiative and wrapped my arm around Williams, urging him to lead me once more. After you! William stared before nodding and leading me through the lobby and up the grand stairs. I could feel every vampire burn their surprise into my body with their gazes. I could only hope that I would be able to get out alive. Maybe there was a way where he was taking me? I was guided to the bedroom, assumed 
assumably his. I had expected to be brought into an office of some sort, but I should have known he had bet other plans. Still, I stepped in, ready to fight and claw my way out. At least, we were alone. If I was going down, I would go down fighting one person, not practically a party full of vampires. You intrigue me. Good, great, I, I hope that's a good thing. Hmm? I heard in my soul and turned to William as he closed the door of the room. I prepared for anything, only shaken at the sound of the door locking echoed through the space. You come to my party with a stolen invitation and you pass yourself off as one of us. Uh oh. To what gain? Tell the truth, tell a lie. What if I tell the truth? Would that be bad? I, I tend to do say the truth in these kind of situations to defuse it, but I don't know if it's gonna work on this dude because he's kind of scary. He was a vampire and he knew exactly who I was. There was no reason to lie now. My friend is a conspiracy theorist who believes vampires are real and and instead of him coming to the party, I came in his stead knowing he would do something stupid. As stupid as going to a vampire ball at all, imagining the risks. William scoffed slightly before slowly walking towards me, his shadow slowly engulfing my form. Well, uh, whatever your reason was, you are here now. Sir, I would like it if you just took five steps back away from my face. Thank you. I took a step back with every step forward he made until my back of my calves hit the edge of his bed. I refused to fall back, letting him tower over me with his chest against mine. So, what will you do now? You've flown haphazardly into the spider's web and have no means of escape. Does that mean you intend to kill me? The thought has crossed my mind. Oh, really? <laughs> I can feel the tense of death caress my spine, taunting me of a future I did not wish to see. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to be a victim of a vampire. William burned his gaze into my soul as he grabbed my hips in a possessive hold. Whoa, dude, what are you doing? Rather, why kill you when I can break you? What does that mean? My heart almost stopped. What does he mean? What did he mean? His eyes instantly turned green, and my mind began to melt. No! 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 Ha! I fought back against the strange hold on me with all my, all my might before I finally pushed William back, causing him to topple onto the floor from the sudden attack. His body hit the floor, and I seized the opportunity. Escape! Wait, you could pin William down! I don't know what that does! I bolted towards the window and flew through it, desperate to escape. Jesus! I rolled to my side, trying to lessen the damage of landing on the grass as I tumbled to the ground by tucking into myself into a roll of some sort. Ah! The crash of my body against the ground shot both immense pain and adrenaline through me despite the roll, but I couldn't stay here. I had to run. I pounded my palms into the ground and forced myself up, letting a carnal need to survive and take control of my limbs. I limped my way through the gate. Thankfully, the guard at the door was barely taken in my form before attempting to run at me. The second my feet hit the road, the guard stopped in his tracks as if some powerful force kept him still. <sighs> Fuck it! I didn't care what held him back. I continued to limp down the forest road towards the direction where Pawa would come, hoping he would see me and stop to help me. I limped for what seemed like an eternity, until my body could not stay up any longer. I collapsed onto the dirt road, feeling pain rush through me at last and not having the strength to fight back anymore. Please don't let them come get me. Don't let them- <sighs> What? I couldn't even lift my head, but I knew something had loomed over me at that very moment. I prayed it wasn't a vampire. Huh? That was reckless. For a human, I'm impressed. Uh, huh? You're lucky I stopped that giant vampire from leaving that stoop. Who knows what that family would have done to you. What? Who? But you're seriously hurt. I doubt you'll survive for long without proper care. Help! Hmm. Suddenly, a warmth enveloped my body. What was this? Why are humans so reckless? I... What happened? Hey! What? What happened? Where? Why was a... I opened my eyes to stare at the night sky through the trees of the forest. Why was I in the forest? My body was sore, but I suddenly... But I slowly able to rise myself up from lying down to a sitting position. Wait, why was I in a fancy outfit? Better question, why was I in a torn up fancy outfit in the middle of the forest? I looked around, seeing Powell rush over into a form of a limo. He assumedly drove in park. Hey, what happened to you? Are you okay? I... Whoa. Ugh, what's happening? Why does my head hurt? Fuck, you look like hell. Let's get you home, okay? I'm so sorry. What am I even doing here? What? 
You don't remember? I... So you're the conspiracy theorist. Huh? Who are you? You don't need to know. And you will never know anything else again. What are you... What happened? What the hell? Where did you take them? You're concerned for them. Of course! Why wouldn't I be? I removed their memories of tonight and returned the victim back where they belonged. That man, however, will no longer think to meddle in the affairs of the supernatural. How can you be so sure? <laughs> no one can hear him theorize from a padded cell. What? What? Did you put him in like a mental institution or something? It's strange. I feel incomplete somehow. I was safe at home, without a plan to carry out or a worry in the world, and yet something was off. What was I missing? Not even Candy was sure of what was going on. She was more concerned as to why she had a random contact named Powell saved onto her phone. Oh, so they got rid of, like, Powell's memory at the same time within our memories, too, so we have no memory of this dude. Did I forget something? I can only remember a glimmer of a dream, gold and red sparkling around me, and I was dancing at the edge of a knife. My body shudders in remembrance, but a dream is merely a dream. Right? Good ending survival! Is this the good ending? Is that it? <laughs> Did I do it? Okay, so the true ending was us escaping, and then these magical beings coming out of nowhere and erasing all of our memories, and I'm just wondering if it's the same mystical voice that we keep hearing in Seduce Me and all of, like, Michaela's other games. That's what I'm wondering who whose voice that is, you know, just, just taking a wild guess there. Anyway, um, that's gonna be my end playthrough of a bloody party. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like, let me know in the comments what you think, and, uh, if you guys would like to grab the game yourself, like I said, the link is in the description, please let me know of the other bad endings, because I'm sure I missed a couple of more, because I didn't see all of them, but I really enjoyed this, can I just say, it was short, sweet, deadly, too, um... I'm cool with the fact that, like, William wasn't, like, very likable, because usually that's, like, what I play, right? Vampires, I'm like, ooh, they're they're good, I don't want to date that dude, but this dude was just trash. <laughs> Can I just say that? This guy was straight up trash. He's good looking, but no. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, what the hell is going on? My guy, why? Okay, we need to get the hell or develop another character. Video game deaths can be tragic. Here are six sad character deaths from video games. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4. 